Here we go then. So, new parts, new panels like this one. Um, it's it's a daily thing. It's day to day running of any sort of body shop or accident repair center. You're gonna get new parts, uh, and they're gonna come electrostatically coated, like this one. Um, so I'm just gonna walk you through how I deal with them. Uh, you'll notice I'm pointed out on the top of this wing here. It is a Mickey Mouse wing. Um, it's a non-genuine part. Um, this is why I'm sanding it, but our Standox primer that we use uh, for wet and wet is U7580 and that's how we like to start our process with any new part. Um, this wet and wet that we use is very versatile, you can use it for plastics, metals, it's got very good anti-corrosion properties. Um, I believe it can actually be mixed as a bit of a, not a high build, but you can turn it into a sanding primer as well with the various additives they've got. But um, it's recommended with the U7580 that um, one of the one of the big advantages is that if it's an OEM part, you don't actually need to sand it. So this part's turned up immaculate. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no scratches. There's no dents. The E coat that's on it, um, it's the best anti-corrosive um, property for the part. So my objective here is to keep as much of that E coat on as possible. Now, like I was saying, if it is an OEM part, we don't have to sand it at all. The Standox U7580 is a DTS, direct to substrate or direct to metal, a DDM primer, and it just sticks to it. It's perfect. So the only reason that I've given this a good key up here is purely because it's um, a non-genuine part. Um, if, I would, if I did have to sand it, if there's a scratch in it, let's say... Um, I wouldn't have to use any etch or anything either because the U7580 has got great um, anti-corrosion properties in itself. So basically the, the, this primer is the best substrate for any part, any new part. It's got, um, you can swap the thinners out for plastic additive. So if you've got a new plastic bumper that's a raw plastic, um, you can just switch that out. So the best thing to do here obviously is give it a real, real good clean make sure that everything's good to go and then let rip I think like one one of the main things as well why the anti corrosion um, properties of the eco is the best it can be is that's the reason why it's shipped like that because these parts are going to be sat in a storage um i'm going to say storage container it won't be in a container but they're shipped from the manufacturer and they've got to sit you know possibly on boats however they get over here and then they're going to be distributed out to the various distributors that are going to keep them in stock until somebody eventually orders the part so the e-coats have been developed to be the most anti-corrosive and the best protection that they can be for any part that's produced um so again that's that's one of the reasons why i want to keep this um eco in the in the best condition possible um like i say if it was a genuine part i wouldn't have even considered sanding it this came you know as smooth as it could be really so I just wanted to make sure that I've just give it a good key because it is a non-genuine. I know Standox recommend that if it's an OEM panel, just hit it, mix up your wet on wet, give it a real. Obviously, you have to give it a good clean anyway, but make sure it's clean, and then you can just whack it straight on. Um, so this is a black wing. Um, well, it is a black wing, but for a black car, a black Audi. So I'm going to use the dark grey wet on wet here. Um, you can mix it into all the different grey shades, so obviously if I'm painting a black car, I'll use black. If I'm doing it white, I'll use white, and then all the grey shades in between, whatever's recommended for the base coat that you're using. You'll want the grey shade to be right. Um, and that's what I was saying in the last video. If you check out my last video, um, we'd ran out of a tint and we had to get some paint mixed. We'd already prepped the car, thinking that we could use a Standox paint, but we'd ran out of a toner. And then when we used the, the different base coat, it was a completely different, um, it required a completely different undercoat. So when I started to apply the base coat, I realized very quickly that I, it wasn't the right undercoat for it, the right gray shade. So I had to apply extra coats to get it covered. But as you can see, 
easy peasy, nice quick coat. Um, I'm coming in here with the the 1000 scuff pad as well, just if there's any nibs. Again, this this base coat is very uh, base coat. This wet and wet is very very versatile. You can you can nib it if you need to, and you can see how smooth it's gone on as well. I suppose part of that's because of how smooth the panel was anyway when it came in. Um, and I just give it one good coat and then almost like a drop coat back down it while it's wet. So say a coat and a half with the wet and wet. Um, my wet and wet gun is a 1.3. Um, shot at two bar wide open um, and then this is the base coat here so all I've done is I've given the, the wet on wet a quick nib um, there's just a couple of little dust fragments I have started to notice um, I don't know because of the booth because I'm quite close to the door obviously when I open the door it causes a vacuum so I might start painting single panels like this a bit further down the booth and then that way when the door's opened I'm not just pulling bits of dust or whatever's in the air because if you imagine we've got preppers out there that are could be blowing cars off or anything so that might cause um could be a reason for some of the inclusions that had landed in this wet and wet um and your base coat's the same as normal um the stand up system is a one and a half coat system almost um and i always like to go edges first edges 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 there's i've seen too many cars i've done i've done it plenty of times myself where you've missed an edge and it'll come out and then they'll start bolting the car together and they'll go, oh, you can see this edge, it's not being covered properly. Obviously on a nice dark car like this, you're probably not going to tell. But you want to make sure that your bases are covered. I hate silly reworks, you know, having to take up booth time again to sort out something so so silly. So do, do the edges first and then concentrate on the face of the panel so you can see one nice good coat on the way up. And then a nice drop coat on the way back down so I've just backed up I've not changed the pressure I've not done anything uh, this gun is my HTE clear it's not obviously I'm not using it for clear at the minute um, it's a 1.2 sprayed at two bar fan wide open and, and fluid wide open as well so oh look at that instant flash off brilliant I wish that was the case so this is the reason why I'm not using my clear gun as a base gun because I've got the geo for my clear gun um, again, same thing. It's also a 1.2 uh, needle wide open, nozzle wide, um, fan wide open. Um, just give it a light tack. I don't normally tack the panels. Um, I was conscious of being next to that door, though, as I just said. Um, but yeah, nice light tack. I don't like to tack the base coat because if for whatever reason it's not quite dry or you can end up marking the base coat and I, I can't stand it just for if you've cleaned it properly it should be clean when you put your base coat on as long as it's not you know really dusty in your booth or whatever there should be no need to really touch it again anyway but for this this one I just tacked it off I guess because it was near the door and I was getting nibs in the um, in the wet and wet I was a bit conscious of that I don't normally do it but yeah, then just whack the clear on as normal. So again, edges first. Uh, give it a good coat and then leave it. I like to leave it for sort of five minutes. Do a little tacky test. Touch maybe the inside of the panel somewhere. Come back in. Again, everything's the same. Two bar, just double check. For, for whatever reason, it could have dropped. And then just bash the second coat on again. Edges. I usually follow the same route around the car or any panel that I'm working on and then that way it's it's dried evenly and then you're reapplying it evenly as well. And you know that's that's a, the quick little walkthrough. I wish every job was easy as this. Single black um wing bolted straight on the car. The colour match was like ninety nine point seven so it was basically edge to edge. It is a metallic black but um, Audi being such a common colour, it's been cameraed and cameraed and cameraed and cameraed. So when we cameraed it, the um, I believe the standoff system uses the like a cloud. So if someone in United States of America scans that colour, and then that will go up to the cloud, and then the cloud will pick it up when I scan it and say that's the best match. So we're getting incredibly good matches. Um, like I say, a, a nice clean job. There's probably one or two nibs in it, and then. We just bottled it on the car. Quick denib and polish. Send it. 
Yeah, I think I'm pointing out here one or two little nibs. But, you know, that, that that's how I get through new, new panels. Obviously, if there's blends and stuff, we do it. But I thought this would be a nice quick video to explain how, how versatile the primer is that we're using. And uh, I hope it brings value to some of you guys.